Do you like food? Well, so does every other living thing. Let's talk about the couple of different diets we see in primates. Do you like to stuff your face? Well, you're not alone. Many other primates like to do that as well, like this orangutan who's trying to eat all the bananas. Let's talk about a couple of the most common primate diets. Here we have a couple different species. Um, our chimpanzees, they are eating another animal um, that looks from that picture that's possibly a bush pig. Next, we have a squirrel monkey or cimmeri eating some fruit. Trachypithecus, a leaf monkey eating some leaves, and Sepuela, the pygmy marmoset, eating sap from a tree. Let's go through these different diets one by one. First up, we have frugivory, or a fancy word for eating fruit. Many primates eat fruit, and um, studies show that when given the chance, almost all primates choose to eat fruit. Um, fruit are interesting because they are patchy in both time and space. Time is that's there's only a particular time of the year when fruit are actually in season. In space, only certain trees will actually produce edible fruit. In general, we find species that um, primarily eat fruit tend to have a little bit larger brains because they need to hold all of that complex information in their memory. Um, the benefit for fruit is they are super easy to digest, and this is probably the reason they are preferred by almost all primates. Fruit are high in carbs, but low in protein. Um, so almost all species that eat fruit will need to supplement their diet with something else to make sure they get enough protein. Next up, we have gramnivory. This just means they eat seeds. These are tougher to process than fruit. You can see this capuchin here, he's working really hard trying to slam that nut open with this gigantic rock. Um, but the benefit is they are available most of the year, so you are not subject to the whims of fruit if you are eating seeds. Next up, we have nectivory, or eating flowers and nectar. Um, apparently, they're really delicious, but like fruit, they're also patchy in time and space. Another really common diet we see in primates is filivory, or eating leaves and stems of plants. In contrast to fruit, leaves are high in protein but low in carbs, and they are also abundant and available year round. Um, so there's a major benefit in their availability, but they are harder to digest. And we do see some primates that specialize in leaves have special gut adaptations so they um, can digest them a little bit more easy. And even though we do have this classic idea that leaves are available all the time and you don't really need to matter, more studies into these leaf-eating primates have revealed that they're actually pretty picky about which leaves they do eat. Um, but we do see eating leaves as a fairly common primate diet. You can see here with this gorilla. Next up, we have gum nimery, or gum nivery, um, or eating exudates, the gum and saps of trees. So this is a pygmy marmoset. They actually gnaw into trees to um, cause wounds in the trees so it bleeds sap and the pygmy marmosets eat that. They actually like farm trees so they'll you know keep on gnawing on it and there will be multiple like bulbs on the tree where they've gnawed at it to force the tree to produce sap. Um, and these guys they actually um, defend these trees and are very territorial about the trees with which they curate. Um, some of the benefits of gum nivery is it is available year round. Trees are always kind of there, but you do need to have really specialized feeding adaptations to be able to get at it. Next up, we have faunivory or carnivory. So now they are eating other animals. Um, for primates, that might be invertebrates such as insects, um, but it might also be vertebrates. So you see here in the tarsiers, they are convergent with owls. So the tarsier on top is eating what appears to be a grasshopper, um, and the tarsier on bottom is eating a lizard. Um, tarsiers will also eat small birds on the rare occasion they can catch them. Um, chimpanzees are also known to hunt, um, and one of their favorite snacks is another primate, the red colobus. Um, with all of these, uh, they are a great source of energy. There is a lot of protein when you're eating another animal, but they are hard to catch. So there is a trade-off if you're going to use this strategy. There's a couple other diets, but none of these are quite as common. Um, there's tubers, roots, and bulbs. 
So you do need to work a little bit extra to dig these up and access these plant products. Um, we do find this on the savanna where there is uh, not as much food available. Um, and there are a couple other species that will eat grass or bark. So we talked about a bunch of examples. So let's talk about how we categorize them. Very few animals or species really eat only one thing. So when we categorize different species, we're really talking about the most prominent food source. There's variation across populations. Different individuals prefer slightly different foods, but there's also variation over a year because different foods are available at different times. Um, folivores will always supplement with fruit when it's available, but they do also specialize to eat leaves. The reason why we make these broad categorizations is it's helpful for us to understand these evolutionary trends. So let's look at a couple different species. This graph shows four different primates. We have a bush baby or a galago, a spider monkey, a langur, and a rhesus macaque. And they are colored by the different things um, we see them eating. Our bush baby, it eats a lot of insects. And really, only the rhesus macaque eats a tiny amount of insects. So we would categorize that as an insectivore or a faunivore or a carnivore. Lots of different words that mean the same thing. Our spider monkey here, you can see it eats a lot of fruit and some leaves. So we would call that guy a frugivore. Our langur eats a fair amount of leaves, but also some flowers and fruit. We call that a folivore because still the majority is leaves. Our rhesus macaque, they're eating a majority of herbs and then a little bit of flowers, a little bit of insects, a little bit of leaves, and a little bit of fruit. So this guy is eating a lot of different things, but primarily herbs, and the, um, that's part of a plant, so we'd call that a folivore. When we're thinking about diet, diet really influences group size, social dynamics, ranging patterns, botting size, activity patterns, gut and teeth, locomotion, life history, brain size, really. Diet influences every single thing about an organism. One important thing to talk about when we're talking about food is called allometry. This means the study of changes in body size and its consequences, or really, size matters. Let's talk about allometry specifically in relation to our gut or our digestive system and our metabolism. As animals get bigger, they need absolutely more food, but they actually need relatively less energy. And one of the consequences of this is they can actually digest foods a little bit more easily. They are bigger and they just have more space for their digestive system. So it's easier for them to get more nutrients out of the food they eat. Um, in contrast, small animals need high quality food. Even though they need absolutely less, they need relatively more um, calories, so they have to get higher quality calories when they're eating. Large animals can get away with that low quality food and just small animals cannot. You can visualize it through this graphic here. A larger primate will have a larger gut or digestive system. That means it has a longer retention time. Food just stays in its digestive tract longer, so it will have increased digestibility, and small primates just don't have that option as a consequence of their size. So when we're talking about primate diets, folivores, that food is highly abundant, but it's fairly low quality. So this is probably only gonna be a strategy of a large primate who can just sit there and digest for a long time. Insectivores, it's really high quality food, but it's hard to obtain. Imagine, how many cockroaches would you need to catch to meet your daily calorie requirements? Forget for a moment just how gross that is. We would, I don't think there's enough hours in the day for me to catch enough cockroaches to fulfill my calorie needs. So all of the insectivorous primates we see, they're small because then they only need to catch a few insects a day and they're good. Frugivores, this really depends on where they get their protein. Remember, fruit is really low in protein, so they do need to supplement their diet with something else. Primates that supplement their diet with um, leaves tend to be larger, and primates that supplement their diet with insects tend to be smaller based on the um, same principles we just talked about before. 
we can visualize it here in this graph. So you can see um, we have different numbers of species um, eating different types of diets. On our x-axis here, that shows the average size of each primate. So you see, we only see insectivores being really small, and folivores are pretty large. On the bottom, we have frugivores, frugivores that supplement their diet with um, insects. Those are, tend to be smaller, and frugivores that supplement their diet with leaves tend to be larger. Here, we have K's threshold, and that's the threshold with which um, primates pretty much have to eat insects. If you are 500 grams or less, you're probably eating insects. And if, but if you're over 500 grams, you are less likely to eat insects. For an example, let's look at my favorite primates, the tarsiers. These guys are really small. They're like two to six ounces. Um, they are carnivorous, and they're actually the only entirely carnivorous primate. So here we see one eating a cockroach, eating a grasshopper, one about to catch a grasshopper, but remember, they will also eat lizards or even small birds if they get the chance. But because they are so small, they pretty much have to eat insects because otherwise they're not going to be able to get uh, enough high quality food to meet their dietary requirements. If you want to learn more about primate diets, read this fantastic um, paper by Milton published in Scientific American in 1993, Diet and Primate Evolution. So what diets do different primates have and what does diet affect?